I believe now I'm connected well. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God has been so gracious and is still gracious and he will remain gracious even in the time of our children, children, children. Praise God. Wherever you are, feel at home, you are highly welcome. It's a blessing to have you as an individual, to have you as a family. We want you to know God is aware you are, are present. So your life will not remain the same. Praise be to God. Good morning, wherever you are. Well, as we know very well, yesterday, by God's grace, yesterday but one, we had a privilege to go through the book of Genesis, chapter 17. So today, by God willing, we we'll have to look at the book of Genesis, chapter 18. Genesis is very interesting to those who were there yesterday. Yesterday, but one, you can really tell how we saw Abraham interceding for the sake of Lot. By the way, not only Lot, but he was interceding for the entire nation, Sodom and Gomorrah. And his prayer was heard to an extent whereby, because of his prayer, Lot was preserved. And we learn through that that interceding on behalf of others is very, very important. We understand that the wickedness of Sodom and Gomorrah, it had reached its brim to an extent whereby, as we go on, we an extent whereby it was beyond explanation. Praise God. This is what it shows us also in this time we are in. When you are in the midst of people who do not fear God, we ought to be careful and be prayerful. Praise God. We have to be very careful and be prayerful because anything can happen at any time. So I would love us to look. If we have someone, please, you would love to be a volunteer to read. Please, we can. You can read, please. Then we enjoy together. I love reading Bible. It's very, very interesting. The more I read the Bible, the more we read the Bible, the more we know God's will concerning us as individuals. Praise God. Yeah, I don't see any hand. Okay, I see sister. Okay, sister Tina, please. Uh, praise the Lord. Okay, so Baba, I should put on my camera. Yeah, it never changed. Yeah, <laughs> it never changed. Mm. Praise God. Yeah, because once we agree something here, it is in heaven already agreed. Praise God. Uh. Okay, yeah. hallelujah. Let me try. But ish, yeah, I'm yeah. a mess. <laughs> in heaven, in heaven never change. Once we agree, don't you see the Bible say, what we agree here on earth, it is agreed in heaven. So if we agree like that, then we do something less. You know what Baba God will say, look at Ibrahim. What is he doing? I don't even know why you stare with the camera. You look beautiful. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I will read a little because I'm just taking break of work. So, yeah. Uh, Genesis chapter 18. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to them. Sorry, I'm going away the noise. Um, he bowed himself to the ground and said, my Lord, if I have found favor, in your sight, 
do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. Mm -hmm. After that, you may pass by. In as much as you have come to your servant, they said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the head, took a tender good calf, gave it to a young man and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, where is Sarah your wife? So he said, here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah your wife shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I've grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being so old? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child and since I'm old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him. That they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, because the, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very great, I'll go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood before the Lord. And Abraham Amen. came near and said, Hallelujah. Amen. Um, we stop there. Thank you. Yeah, you see how interesting it is. I don't know if you are able to say anything. You see how it's interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Um uh, the Bible, it's from this one, it starts by saying that. The Lord, as um, uh, Abraham was sitting, the Lord appeared to him by the turbine trees of Mamre. Uh, he went to make uh, his dwelling there. So he was sitting in his tent in the heat of the day, meaning it was very, very hot. And that's why he was sitting in the tent. and. Uh, uh, by the that that was near those the uh, terebinth trees, and um, he saw three men passing by. And quickly, as soon as he saw them, the Bible says he ran out of his tent to go meet them. And he pleaded with them that if he had found favor. With, uh, uh, with him, if they had found favor with him, or he has found favor with them, and they have stood by listening to him, then they should just stop, take, get some water to refresh themselves, to wash their feet, so that they go away, which they 
obliged, they agreed to. And he went and told the wife, Sarah, who was also resting. And here, honestly, I want to take my hat off to Sarah because the Bible says it was hot. And apparently they were all resting. And Baba Abraham has gone to look for a job. If I were uh, uh, someone, if like Sarah, I was in the position of Sarah, I wouldn't have done it because God knows that when it comes to kitchen work, I don't like it so much. So for Abraham to just go invite these strangers that were going somewhere and come and give me work, honestly, that day, it, there will be a great argument. But Sarah, just as she was humble, a truly virtuous woman to the extent that she called her husband Lord, something God knows I cannot do. <laughs> yeah, she didn't complain. The Bible does, it doesn't say that she asked any question. Why? What are we going to do with it? Or she just did it as was uh, told her by the husband. So I quickly make some fine meal. He, she, he even said fine meal, meaning... The, the, the meal that, you know, I'm beginning to think like from where I come, we have varieties of uh, rice and the very special ones we reserve purely for Christmas. Ordinary days, you come and we just go use a normal one with stones and sand, we chew them together. But here, I also want to believe Abraham did that because he was somebody who was always in tune with the spirit of God. So um, I'm sure he was inspired by the spirit of God to do that. Quickly, just make ready three measures of fine meal, not the homemade one, the fine one. Knead it and make cakes, not even bread, cakes. Ah, Abraham was a good man. And he himself went to the, uh, the, 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 the uh, where the sheep were kept. And the Bible says he took a tender and good calf. Wow. <laughs> tender and good calf. Gave it to one of his uh, uh, attendants. And he quickly prepared some nice meal, added butter and milk with a calf, and then served it before the strangers. On top of that, the Bible says, as they were eating, uh, he stood by them like he was really attending to them honorably, obediently. He stood by them. And as they ate, they asked him, where is your wife? Then he replied, He's, she's inside. And um, they uh, gave him a word that next year by this time when we shall return according to the time of life your wife Sarah would have a son I want to believe maybe Sarah was just resting either in the kitchen or around the bedroom and these men were in the balcony or on the veranda eating so they could he, she could hear or eavesdrop on whatever their men were talking about so Sarah laughed and said oh as old and finished as i am am i going to have any pleasure let alone bearing a, a, a child so the strangers had it i'm not sure if they had it with their ears or they had it in the spirit but i want to believe sarah didn't laugh so loud that they would hear and that is why when they asked why did your wife laugh then she said I didn't laugh then they told her with absolute certainty that yes but you did laugh and I would have done the same thing I would even have just just I would not just laugh I'll say Ash please I've been hearing this for so many years and now that I'm completely worn out, how am I going to? Yeah, I wouldn't just have laughed. And I really 
honor those people and uh, no wonder God fulfilled his promises uh, to them because if it had been any of us women married women in these days like we wouldn't even like and even any other man like the man wouldn't have stuck with Sarah till that age childless like I don't know but yeah so um after they finished eating they got up and headed towards uh, uh Sodom where they had been sent to go you know uh, 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 bring the judgment of God upon them. Then they contemplated, should we or should we not tell Abraham? Because Abraham, God has promised him, uh, the Lord said he has promised him he'll be a great nation. And uh, so like, what? why should uh, it be kept a secret from uh, uh, Abraham? So, um, then from, so from verse 19, I'm not sure whether they did tell Abraham what they were going to do or not, because verse 19 says, for I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Yeah, so yeah that is all i can say about it yeah thank you well well wow you have said almost everything but you know bible is very wise thank you so much i guess you are a teacher god bless you wow just to add on the other side is that when you look around right from verse from chapter 17 it was about god what he had planned in the beginning you can see that in 17 we learned something about when god made a promise to sarai to abraham verse 21 of 17 said but my covenant will i establish with isaac which because at then is when God was telling Abraham that he will have a child. Because earlier on, Abraham complained and said, ah, let this Ishmael be before you. Because Abraham himself was considering himself very old, cannot bear a child, son. Then that's how God told him in verse 21 of verse 17, chapter 17, that my, con my covenant will I establish with Isaac and Sarah shall bear unto thee. So it was in 17 when god made that promise to abraham that his covenant he will establish it with isaac now right from 18 where our sister just went through i would love to say something there are many things we learn here the question is what is the meaning behind what do we learn from abraham sitting just seated You will, you will see, as we continue to realize, even Lot, he also was sitting by himself. By that time, he was not with Sarah. Sarah, I think she was somewhere within the tent. So I will say this. And when the Lord appeared to him in the plain of Merah, he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. I'll say this, when you look around many times, it's very, uh, at that time is when people are very busy. But if you set that time to say you want to meet with God, I, mean, I believe it's around from 12, starting from 12. So you see here, the Bible says that Abraham was sitting at the door of the tent, quiet, and his eyes was on the way. Praise God. It means... If one want to experience God, somehow, somewhere, he must have a quiet time. He must separate himself. He must try to be by himself. He will be able to notice the presence of God. Why? If Abraham was busy, either maybe talk, doing some things 
with his wife or people, he wouldn't have noticed these three men. But at that time, he had decided to sit in front of his door. We don't know what he was doing, but someone like me, I would say he was meditating and trying to ask himself this promise. He's seeing like, I am getting old. I'm very old. Who will inherit me? So in that time, because he was, I believe, he was meditating, he was able to notice God. He was able to notice these visitors. By the way, they were strangers. That's why you see the Bible tells us that we entertain strangers because some have, been, have welcomed angels unknowingly. See what happened. And lift up his eyes, looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And where he saw them, he ran to meet them from tent door and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. There is something I want you to see. Abraham was a completely good example for us. He saw strangers. Mind you, at that time, he was a very wealthy man. I don't think there is any rich person can do such a thing. You see people passing. You go and run to them. First of all, you feel insecure. Maybe they want to, to kill me to take my property. But not with Abraham. It means Abraham treated everyone equal. Because I guess this man, they were dirty. Because he said, let me fetch water and you wash your feet. As it means they, their feet was dirty. But despite of their feet being dirty, he still went further and bowed before him. Abraham was really a humble man. In our generation now, I don't think there is anyone who is rich can do such a thing. You see people passing your door. You run to them and even they are not clean. You tell, there are very few people who can do such a thing. And that is the reason many a times blessing bypass us. Abraham went further and bowed before them despite of all the blessing that was upon his life, considering himself that is nothing. I understand Abraham knew that all he has is not his. He had been just assigned to hold it for somebody else. Praise God. So he went further and after he bowed to them before them, he went further and welcomed him, them to his tent. The Bible says he ran, ran toward them, which means I guess they were a bit far. Question is, how was he able to notice people who are far? Because he ran to them to meet them. This shows that sometimes many are, we need to do some extra effort so that we can be able to welcome God in our situation. We need to come out from our comfort zone so that we can experience God's blessing. Because if Abraham stayed well seated and looked at them, they would have passed him. Who knows, maybe even the, the, they wouldn't have received the message concerning the child. But he took some extra mile and ran towards them. And his kind of homage or the kind of that the way he showed reverence to them, it moved them because they appeared to Abraham as mere men. That's what the Bible says, men, but they were Lord. This makes us understand that everyone we see around, we should see them like angels because we do not know. Praise God. So, if we understand that men are angels, we'll treat them with respect. The way I treat you, sister, is the way I treat someone who has nothing. But not in our today. If you have nothing, even good morning, someone will not say. And even when you say good morning, someone likely not to answer you because you don't have. 
the one who come with the Mercedes Benz, they will rashly give him a seat or welcome him. And the one who come barefooted, likely not to be considered. And that is the reason why people miss their blessing. So he went further and said, let a little water be pray, I pray, you be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourself under the tree. And I will fetch my soul of bread and comfort ye your heart. After that he shall pass on, for therefore I come to your servant. And they said, do, so do as do has said. Imagine he went further and planned what to, to help them to, to make a better meal, as my sister have said. What does that mean? This all Abraham did, not knowing that these people are going to give him a child he was looking for. He did not have any idea. But to him, he considered the, someone else as better than him. He considered, because even he called himself thy servant. Despite of how this man appeared to him, he still considered himself as a servant to them. He begged them. Nowadays, I have seen people, they said this one is for me and for my children. You can see people taking good care of their children, but yet neighbor around them, they cannot even afford a meal. Yet someone you go to shopping, you come with a you spend a lot of money on your children, that is fine. But your neighbor, they don't have even, they are starving and make it worse. Maybe even you are aware. And you are not even ashamed to talk about it. Just like you are taking your children to very expensive schools, but your neighbor there, children, they are always playing. And you say, these children don't go even to school. If you really are a good Christian, call these children and ask, ah, oh, you don't go to school? Then they will tell you, ah, mommy cannot take us to school. Then why? Maybe they don't have a uniform. You as a descendant of Abraham, you can go further and reduce your expense and buy these children's uniform and books and you send them to school. What a best investment. Praise God. So, that is the investment we need to do rather than laughing on laughing when we see others struggling praise god you have fridges full of food you can even throw away but your neighbor they cannot they don't even afford it. they cannot even afford a meal so that was not with abraham he prepared something special for them he did not know what he was doing but he was sowing to the invisible. He was sowing a seed to invisible. This is why you hear me many a times I say that the best investment anyone can ever do is open your eyes of faith and see those who are around you in need. Give them support. You are sowing. Your healing is in them. Your deliverance is in those people wherever you put a smile on them. For Abraham, when he saw these people, he washed their feet, he gave them his good meal, and he even made them to sit comfortable under a tree. Under a tree those days, it was like air corn. He said that they, they can refresh in their heart. Praise God. So let you be mindful of this. When you see a poor man near you, see it as an assignment from God for you to help such one. So, the Bible says, there's something surprising, that Abraham went and told his wife to prepare something. And even he went to his animals and picked, choose the best one. And he told the young men to prepare it. And even he brought butter. You know that in those days, if you go to the village and they give you butter, that is the best meal you can ever receive from grandparents. Something special. You don't easily get it. So he served this man, not expecting anything from them. In our days, nowadays, people will give you if they know. Most
on their birthday, you will invite them on your birthday so that they can bring you gifts. So Abraham invested in these three men without expecting. He told them, eat after you eat, you are able to go. And exactly that is what happened. After they have enjoyed best meal, that's what I said to us. The problem is many a times what we give to God is what we don't want. The time we don't want, that is the time we give to God. Even what we give to people is not what we want. So I say, based on what you see to Abraham, he did. He did the best. He gave the best. So you too, whatever you do for God's sake, give your best time, <clears throat> your quality time. Praise God. It means a lot. While Abraham doing this, he did not know what he could receive in return because he was not expecting anything. These men did not have a bag. They were just walking. Praise God. See, as they were eating, they went further and asked, where is your wife, sir? It means that the way Abraham approached them moved their heart. The way Abraham welcomed them in his place, it touched their attention. And he went further and bring something good for them to eat. It made them to think of blessing. Now, I have seen many people, everyone wants healing, want delivery. But the question is, how you, are you prepared to receive that from God? What step have you taken earlier on before you come? Have you taken some steps of prayer and fasting? Have you taken some step of reading your Bible as an individual? Have you taken some time and do some charity work? Praise God. Healing doesn't just happen, but what makes it happen quickly is the way you are living, the way you are doing things based on the scripture. When you are touching lives of people, before you know, the miracle you are looking for, it finds you. The blessing you are looking for, it finds you. I would say this. I have seen people suffering with sickness for many years. But there is a secret that can take away some diseases or some problem. Just go out of your comfort zone, some quality things that you have, and give to people in need. I tell you, before you know your problem is done. Praise God. I love insisting on giving to people. Give to people around you. Support them. That one open doors. See a minister of God that you know. They are suffering in their church. Be a blessing to that ministry. Be due to economic war. Many churches are going through difficult times. You know one of the churches you know. Men and women are struggling. Send some money to them. Send some support to them. Let them have hope. You are doing this. You are investing where Jesus said, invest where mold and rust cannot. Praise God. Support them. Call them. Find out how they are doing. I do believe many pastors, even to take children now to school is a problem. Why? Maybe members are no more coming to church. So please, consider such people and it will move you just as Abraham. Abraham, when he, he did all this, it made people, this man, to give him what even he did not ask. So, your sacrifices, your commitment to God, your reverence for him, you see Abraham worshipped him. It will make God, you are asking him for fish, he will take you to the sea and you become the one, who, the fisherman, you give people fish. Praise God. See how Abraham did. He went further, he ran. He had to run. He went further and kneeled before them. He considered himself nothing. Ah, nowadays, 
the way I know people, once something is there, everything changed. Praise God. Listen. Indeed, I do thank God for the example of our mother, Sarah. Just like what I've had my sister. Nowadays, if you tell um, your wife like that, it can be a problem. So this shows us if really you are a Christian, be a Christian and don't pretend. Visitors don't need an invitation. If such a man, your husband, even though sometimes you misbehave in front of him when you are two, when there are people there, he come and tell you, honey, we have visitors, do this. Even if you don't want, do it. It may be the solution to your problem. If Sarah had said, why you disturb me? She was going to miss a, a blessing. But she quickly went to the kitchen and do the, the right, the need food. To an extent whereby you see, after she have, she's busy, pre, as she's preparing, the men, as, as she, after she had prepared, men went further and asked of her. In her heart, she laughed when she had the statement. What that means? It means that God knows the thoughts of our heart, even if we don't pray. Because Sarah laughed in her heart, but they heard, which means before even we say words, God is aware. That's why, you see, if you say, I bless, I love you, and you are hurt, you say, mm -hmm. God will not see the word, I love you. He sees the word in the heart. God is so much concerned with our heart. So Sarah, happily knowing that he had received visitors, it, visitors, it was a blessing for her. She quickly did what he supposed. And by the way, she was an old woman. But this was a kind of woman, all women who love kitchen. So I believe even my sister from now will be a good one in the kitchen. Praise God. Yeah. So as Sarah did that, the men went and pronounced a blessing upon Sarah. Because of what Abraham did earlier on, no matter even Sarah doubted or laughed, that one did not stop the blessing to be pronounced over her. The man said at the appointed time she will have a child. That was unchangeable. So here is what I want you to know. Wherever our we show our humility before God, genuine, no matter what we do in the process, it will not change God's promise concerning us. That's why I love to say when God has blessed you, no one can curse you. When God opens the door for you, nobody will be able to close it. When God raises you up, there will be no one able to put you down. No matter wrong you may do, God will still fulfill his promise upon your life. Sarah laughed. That was enough to make them say, okay, you have laughed. But that one, they did not consider that. Why? She, was, she prepared a good meal for them. What kind of meal can you prepare of God? Your dance, your praises, your obedience to his word. Such a meal is sweet for him. When you there, you sing songs, you dance. Such meals move God's attention. You are helping, supporting a brother or a sister, encouraging a brother. Maybe a sister come and tell you she has issues in a marriage or relationship. Then you don't take side, you become a neutral. Try to see that you solve the matter. You don't say, ah, that husband is not, ah, that man, men are like that. No. Even if she says that, oh, do you know that my husband is having an affair with another woman? Don't say, you know what? Let us hear God's opinion. But many of you, I know, say, ah, men are like that. But not those who are in forum. Those in forum are good women. You will tell her, you will advise her, you tell her to be patient, pray over it. Praise God. Because even sometimes God may be using that to strengthen the marriage. I know this to men, many of men. Most of men or women, if they are taking their husband for granted or their wife for granted, 
If they start hearing phone calls from the wife, they start saying, ah, who, is, who is dating my wife? And if she used to come back at six, now she has started coming back at eight. Ha! Huh? Who is moving out with my wife? If he never thought of the wife, he starts thinking. Praise God. But I'm not saying you change the time of coming home. If it is seven, it is seven. Praise God. So, those are the ingredients, things that Abraham and Sarah did, which means the household of Abraham, household of Abraham, it was very submissive to him. When he said to them, hey, nobody will say B. Ah, in our days, if you tell people A, they will tell you C is A. And even they likely to put you where you belong. So I pray to us, please. Because Abraham told the wife, she did not hesitate. He commanded the servant immediately. The wife did not say, ah, I've just finished cooking. I'm very tired. You know now. No, no, no. Such things in thy blessing. What does that mean? Time of gathering, you say, I am tired. Ah. Such things in the blessing. I pray that we take that example. Then, when we continue, you see that Sarah, even though she asked herself that, oh, I'm very old, at this age of mine, will I be able to bear a child, a child to bear my husband? Even himself already is old because they have stopped in the, to be in, in, the, in the relationship. Then listen to what the angel is asking you and I. Some of you say, how will I come out of this problem? How will this be solved? How will I get this? The Lord is asking you and I, in Genesis 18, verse 14. Is there, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed will I return unto thee, according to the time of life. Sarah shall have a son. So the Lord is asking, is there anything too hard for him? Certainly not. Everything with God are possible. So is there anything God cannot do for you? Is there, if Jesus was able to die on the cross for you and I, if he was able to give Abraham a son at the, age, at the old age, Sarah herself was stricken in age. Is there anything that God cannot do? Can, I, can God not make a way for you to have those judgments? Can God may not make you to have that child? Can God make you not to have that business? Can God fail to make you have that contract? Can really God fail to heal you? Is there anything God, is there anything too hard for God? No. He approved himself mighty. Here we see he made a promise to Sarah. He said, next year when I return, you have a child. That's why you see, if God inspired me one day and someone is childless, and I say, at this time to next year, you have a child. Once you say amen and you believe, I tell you, you will come and say, I have a baby. Praise be to God. Yeah, look here before I bring it to an end. There's something I want you to see here. The Bible says, Then Sarah denied, saying, I, la I laugh not, for she was afraid, and he said, None, but thou didst laugh. And the men arose up from hence and laughed towards Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. There is something the Bible have not mentioned. I want us to see. They asked Sarah. Sarah said he did not laugh. They told him that he laughed. I believe that this is one of the reasons they would have stayed for some few minutes. But because of that, they decided to stand up and go for their mission. Praise God. So I pray that when the word of God has been declared in your life, 
you accept it in simplicity, then you experience the great power of God. So the Bible says, after they have said that they stood up, praise God. I do believe they made Sarah know that indeed you have laughed. The Bible says she was afraid, which means because of fear, she had to laugh. Just like any other human being, fear caused men to lie. Praise God. <laughs> the Bible says, and Abraham decided to follow them. Look towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation? And all the nation of the earth shall be released, blessed in him. Now there is something I want you to see. After Abraham had served this man, he decided to follow them up. And in the process of following them, that's what God had to do. They had to reveal their mission, where they are going. In their heart, they say, since this man has been with me, he has served me. Ah, and it's going to be the father of it's going to be the father of the nation. I will not hide this from him. Which means Abraham's generosity and his desire to be with these visitors opened a door for him to know more sacred. What does that mean? The one who draw, the one who step more deeper in things of God, time is spent in God. God will reveal His plans to him. Abraham did not stop on serving, but he insisted he want to push them. He want to see them going because Sarah and the servants remain home, but him he followed. That's why you see many a times we miss a blessing. We can come in the presence of God, either in your house you are praying. After you pray, ba, 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 you stand up, you go. That's where we miss a blessing. But the truth is that after you make a prayer, you need to stay there and wait to hear God's opinion. And he will tell you something that he had not told anybody. The Bible called him my friend, him friend, his friend which means Abraham was always eager to hear from God. Time to time they were having communication. If you say I'm your friend, and how many times you give a call, how, many, how long you text me, or you only text when I text you. So it means Abraham to be called a friend, it is that. He was time to time checking on God, making phone calls. Some of us, you may find out that after Bible study, your Bible you close. You will open it when you join another gathering. Apart from that, you will not open your Bible. That friendship is questionable. Just let it be that time in time, timeless. Have time and read your Bible. Pray. So the Lord said to Himself, "Since He's my friend, I cannot hide." Which means God revealed His plans to His friends. And I believe you are one of his friends. So my encouragement for you is you are doing better, but try to spend more time with God. And you will experience, as I bring it to an end, verse 20 and 21. And the Lord said, because he cry, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and it is not, I will know. Okay. Imagine the nation Sodom and Gomorrah, it was the one cry, which means when we live in sin, where we are, the ground will cry to God. And if it's too beyond, it's beyond, then God will come to act. So the Lord said that he will 
he was telling Abraham, he will go and see to find out if all of them they have done went astray. I pray that when the Lord visit to destroy a particular place, he always find you there. It can be organization. There is a lot of wickedness. It can be a church or a ministry. But because of you as a person interceding on the behalf of that ministry, they will stand. So I pray that you continue to be such a woman, such a man, interceding on behalf of others. Just like what Abraham will see, will see in front in front what he, he did. So as I bring to an end, the Bible says that the cry of it, which means when the sin is beyond, Every one man has seen it, shedding innocent blood. The, the land is crying. Just you remember when you read about Abel and Cain. The Bible says that the earth which opened to take the blood of Abel was still crying. So I pray that we be people interceding on behalf. We be good friends of God. Can tell you secrets, his plan. Praise God. I want to believe I'm in the midst of friends of God. Praise God. I am a friend of God. He calls me his friend. May God bless his word as we have ended in on Genesis 21, verse 21, 18, 21. Praise God. May God bless his word. Please, if you have a question, we really love to see that we answer. Any contribution, question? Praise God. Any question? Before we pray for someone, and we also would love to pray for somebody. Yeah, Sister Tina, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, sister. Please, Baba, um, I have a question. You see, um, God had earlier on promised Abraham and Sarah of a son. Mm. And uh, here we read that whilst uh, the strangers, the angels in the form of strangers had been served by Abraham and they were eating, they reaffirmed to him the promise of God by saying uh, a year by this time, by the time they returned, according to the time of life, the wife Sarah would have given birth. So now my question is, and uh, uh, when they said that the Bible says Sarah laughed and she didn't, uh, when asked why she laughed, she denied, meaning for Sarah, probably because she had grown so old, both her and her husband, she really didn't believe that it will actually be possible for that promise of God to come to pass in her life. That's why I believe she laughed. Um, um, so now my question is, what if maybe Abraham had not attended to these uh, uh, strangers or had not shown them hospitality and they hadn't confirmed or reaffirmed the promise of God to them, what would have become of that promise? Will it or would it not have come to pass? Because here it's obvious that what Abraham did was in the plan of God, but now, uh, most of us, if it were to be in our days, most of us probably would have missed that kind of blessing. So now I want to know, what if Abraham had not attended to them? Would that promise God had made to them been fulfilled or not? Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Actually, when you look around, you see this give us a very good example for something we can it can help us here many of us say god have promised you something 
based on what you have read, it shows you that when God promises you, He will come time and number to make you sure, to make to prove to you that He is really who have spoken. Before now, you can see that from the first time God started His journey with Abraham, He made a promise to make him a great nation or a father of many. You can see that even in verse 15, chapter 15, he made a promise. In chapter 17, verse 21, he still made a promise of him about a child, which means God came several times uh, proving to him that it will happen, it will happen. So when it comes to this man, they confirm the promise. Now, I would say this, if Abraham did not notice this man, I believe he would have, his blessing would have delayed. But based on my personal experience, God always makes his people sensitive. They don't easily miss the visitation. I know many a times I can use this as an example. There are many a times when God, I'm going to have visitation. He make me know even day and time. It happens sometimes. But sometimes it doesn't happen that way. But it makes me know. This is why you see, I don't take mad people, poor people, or anybody for granted. Why? The Lord have made me know for many, many times through revelation that human beings are like angels. So for that reason, whether a child, whether a beggar, whether a rich person, I see them the same because I don't know who they are. So I do see, it's the same thing I see with Abraham. Abraham Based on what he did to these people, it shows that he was. That's how he used to treat every stranger. So, meaning he was always sensitive in the spirit. That's why we are always asked to be sensitive. Because if he did not, it means the blessing will have delayed. Praise God. That's why I see. I say to you, many of you, you are working. You are busy asking God for divine helper. Be careful with everyone around you, even your enemies. Somebody can be so bad, but it's the very one God is going to use to speak for you. Praise God. I do believe if he did not notice, the blessing would have delayed. So I do understand right from the beginning that was the life of Abraham. He welcomed everybody equally. And that one, he received a blessing. So I will say this to us. Whoever come your way, treat them the same. Even in the churches I have seen, when you come dressed in a suit, they will take you to sit in front. When you come with the slippers, with the dirty clothes, they likely to tell you don't, there is no church, there is no service for you. And that's how they miss their blessing. Yesterday I was privileged, I came across, I think this man is not mad. I see a very, a mad man on the street. I've never seen this before. Uh, as I saw this man, I was coming out of the, the bus. When I turn like this, I see a man busy picking papers. So when he was picking papers, and it's, there was heat, I said, ah, this man is picking paper, have he eaten? So I look around, I say, ah, let me just get a drink for him. So I went and bought two drinks and I give this man. When I'm giving this man, there is something I told him, please, can he say, no, 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 I'm okay. Ah, you know here, Miyama people don't easily speak English. Ah. I told him, no, I bought two, one for you, one for me. He said, okay, okay, okay. He accepted. Then as I was going, 
In my spirit, I felt I'm not comfortable. I came back to this man. When we started talking, I was surprised this man speak very good English. Even, you know, I asked him his name. He tells me his name. I ask him, what, why are you like this? He say, you know, I say, I ask him, do you have brothers? He say, no, I'm the only one. My father died, my mother died, my family, parent, everybody died, I'm only one. Ah, this madman who was picking papers, doing ju -ju 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 -ju. I asked him, have you eaten? No, he said, I have not eaten. Eh. I said, do you mind we walk and look for something to eat? He said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Ah, we walk with this man, we cross the road, we go, we are talking, we are having conversation. He speak very good English. He went further and told me, you know what? If you have something you want to do and you want somebody to help you, call me, I will help you. Ah, I say, I thought you were a madman in my heart. I say, ah, this one, I think is not a madman. This is another angel. So we walk, we sat somewhere. I was surprised the man talked nicely, give me stories. After all, he left. What I'm trying to say in this is that we should not judge people with their appearance. God many a times he hide himself in such people. Praise God. Such people don't they may not, I will tell you, if you are kind of somebody who consider them, even if they are rough, when you see them, give them something to eat, they will not reject or something to drink. Or if possible, give them something to cover themselves. Some of them, they are not really mad. And if they are, they are mad, still God loves them. Praise God. So I will say this, that sometimes if we ignore people, we are delaying our blessing. Just like Abraham, if Abraham had ignored this man, I believe his blessing was going to delay. That is my answer to my sister. Praise God. I believe I make some good points. Sister, if you are there, praise God. Yes, Baba. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. Yeah. So, amen. God bless you. So, you too, those people near your house there, I know where we are countries, people are well, well. But no matter how people well off are, if you have an opportunity to be a blessing to them, bless them. Some people don't just want to hear somebody to listen to them. And when you do that, they will talk to you and they feel good. Praise God. Yeah. We love to pray for someone. If you are there, we love to pray for you. Or if you want to tell us what the Lord have done for you. Praise God. So I don't know if Sister Tina you're in position. Okay. If Sister Tina you're in position, you can sing for us. Oh, Sister Jane, I see. I just want to say thank you. God bless you for all you do. Amen. God bless you. But we never see your face. I don't know why you hide it, beautiful face. Amen. Sister Abdul, please. We love you, Sister Jane. Thank you. Good morning, Baba Zahir. Good morning. Yeah, um, I have prayer request. Um, I want a prayer request for my in-law, the one that you prayed for her yesterday, for mm. a problem for her marriage. I talked to her today. She said they had a problem yesterday and her husband beat her up. So... Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> huh? I say, yeah, no. I think she, the way she speaks words to the man. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that um, she's a woman of God. What, hmm? She's not telling you what is the problem between them. Because she may be saying, I have a problem, and she doesn't open up. 
No, she did tell me, and then, um, and then the spirit of God confirmed it. But I just want to pray yeah, for the, that's, uh, for the for the spirit of uh, anger and fight for, from this man to go away. And again, there's uh, there's a couple I prayed for them today. It was. <laughs> It was a time that I don't really know about. We was in group praying. And then suddenly this lady has spoke. She was just blaming her husband. And then the spirit of God was revealing everything to me. And I was telling her according what, what the spirit said. So and then her husband came and group, but he was a nice man. And then the spirit of God told me she had anger. So we prayed for her. So when I was praying, Papa, I found that I was I was using the scriptures when I was praying. And then I found myself I was growing. And then I continue praying. And then the Lord told me to pray for the man to have a job because he doesn't have a job. And that's the big problem that they have in the house. So I prayed for him. And that's it. But I was a bit afraid. Why? Why was I growing while I was I was praying? And I had a dream and then the dream was about a group that I prayed with. We, we went in um, mm -hmm. conference and then when we came back, we, we went to the bus, we're coming back. So all of us was in the bus, the, the people that were there, they wasn't, they wasn't wearing seatbelt, even the driver, which is the, which is the lady that has ministry. She's the, she's, she's the one that, uh, was the driver of us, but she wasn't wearing a seat belt. And then we came and we passed over and then we we found there was too much flood of water. And then the water came into the bus, but everyone was fine. Nothing happened to people, we just passed over. So after we passed, we left this uh, flood over behind us and then we go more further. We found a policeman and then the policeman came into the bus. He was checking that who was wearing seat belt and who was, wasn't. So, and for me myself, I put my seatbelt on, but my seatbelt wasn't really going inside. And then I hold it down. I still have it, but I was holding it down so it can not come out. And then when, the, when that man came, he was, he asked like, why are those people not wearing seatbelt? And then I said, I don't know, I've been talking since before, but they cannot see the seatbelt. The problem is pe that the people that are in the bus, they wasn't see the, even the driver, they cannot see the seatbelt, but I can see the seatbelt. And then the and then the policeman told me that you know when you wear a seatbelt you are safe like in case accident happen then you you will be safe but if you don't have your seatbelt then you not you're not going to be safe and then he returned to me and he said like you now if there's an accident happen you will be safe but those people they're not safe that's why you should tell them to wear a seatbelt and then I said I will try if I can go and do it for them I will go and do it but the thing I cannot get up from where I am to go and show them. But I told them, the seat, you guys can see, I can see the seat belt, but they cannot see it. And then I wake up. So I don't know what is that about. I didn't have anyone to explain it for me. Yeah, I'll just tell you. Uh, you know, when we go to Ephesians 6 from verse 11. You have your Bible, please. Yeah. Okay, it's Ephesians 6 from verse 11. Oh, wait a minute. I cannot see it. Oh, Ephesians, Ephesians. I know this is a bit hard to uh, have uh, Arabic. Someone can read English if you have a teacher from verse 11. Yeah, you want me to read it? Because mine is Arabic. Okay, 
Okay, you read it, then I'll just explain. From 11. Okay. Ilbasu silah Allah al kamil leke takdaru an tasbitu dud de makai de iblis. Yeah, if I if I can say Papa you said here that you were um uh, I don't know how to say it in English. The all arm of God. Yeah, so don't you can I, you can be safe from just, the devil. Yeah, just okay. Read. okay, okay, read verse 14. Okay. Read verse 14. 14. And, one four. 14? One four. One four. Okay. Oh, one four is said. Fast the two Mutumantokin Ahkakum Belhak Wa Walabisin Dira Albir. Yep. Finish. What does that mean? Can you speak in English? Little English you understand. Then I can explain. It said that that you should um you should you should you should be in in a, in a, in um in the truth of God. Yeah, and then yeah, I I believe this is uh, what you mean here, word of God. So we can we can be able to 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 pass over the um. And then he said that where where um. The, it's like blessing or peace of God. Okay. I yeah. will explain. Thank you. Okay. All right. When you are talking, that's where the Spirit of God directed me to read, to tell you to read. It means we will continue praying for them, but it means that there is no truth in the. There is no Sorry, truth the Baba, ministry. please. What was the scripture? Ephesians. Okay. From six. Six okay. from I she decided I decided okay let, since you, you can read for us from verse eleven to fourteen. Okay. Please. Ephesians chapter six, verse eleven. Using the New King James Version. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Twelve. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places, 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand, 14. Stand therefore, having gathered your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah, according to the revelation she explained to us she mentioned they were in the car in the bus but everyone else did not have a seat belt only her and for her she was able to see the seat belt is where it is but they don't see it so see belt is all of us the bible is telling us verse 14 to have the belt which is the truth so it means you may see God using them, but there is no truth to many of them. Praise God. So in other words, when this one come to us, because wherever God speak a message to someone and he mentioned in our midst, it means it is what is happening to us where we are. God is asking us, each one of us, let us be of the truth. Praise God. Before I continue, I see my sister's hand up. Sister oh, Tina. Sorry, wait. Okay, yeah, you want to say something? Okay, say something. Yeah, I was, I the, was to say that how God using them well. They don't have seat, but I mean, they don't have the truth. Sorry, Tina. 
We do not get you to say, Sister Adut, first before Tina speaks. I said, how is God going to use them? And, and they don't have the truth. So that was my question. OK, I answered that one. When you look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Tina, be patient, please. Can you read there, please? Matthew 7, 21. Okay, Matthew 7, 21. Um, I'm reading from the Good News translation. Not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. Amen. Verse 22, please. I should continue. Yeah. Okay. 22. When the day, when the judgment day comes, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, in your name we spoke God's message. By your name, we drove out many demons and performed many miracles. Then I will say to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you wicked people. Please, should I Amen. continue? Amen. No, enough. I want to answer my sister. God can use anyone, but he doesn't know the person. Even if even if God used me to heal, to deliver, it doesn't really mean that I'm called. Praise God. You see here I say, many will say, we cast out demons, we heal the sick. God is saying, go away from me. You did not do what I have asked you. What makes, moves God's attention? My obedience to his word. Based on what you asked earlier on concerning the city bed, you see the statement of the man who talked to you, the policeman. He said, you, you are safe, but them, they are not safe. It means to us all who we are here. We are not safe if we don't put on all harm of God. What is that? Main thing, the truth. The truth is like if I ask you, you say yes, and you mean yes. If you say yes, I, okay, I love you. It means you really love me. Don't say you love me, but in the behind me, you are looking for my downfall. Don't say yes, we are all Christian, but in your plan there, you're saying, look at this man, this boy. Because if you look at them, they were all in the bus. Bus is like this, what we are in the now, all of us. God is talking not only to them, he's talking to us here. He's saying to us who are here, let us have be of truth. I will make sure he says, sister, be of truth. Don't say, okay, I, I love Baba Ibrahim because I'm here, but behind me, you are looking for my downfall. I love this, Tatina, but behind you, I look. That's what it means, let us be of truth. The man mentioned you are safe. You know what it means? Based on what my sister read, it made us understand. When you have the shield of faith, it means when arrow of enemy throw to you, they end on the faith shield and you are safe. When enemy brings lies, because you are a faith man, woman, you are not moved with what you see. If you have the element of salvation, it means even if they throw arrows, you still stand. If you are fit, you preach the gospel. Even if you hear people saying, ah, you, are, you want to give up, but because you remember, like now, example, I give you example, me here. It's very difficult to follow, you know what? I'm the one telling you, sister, it shall be well. So if I encounter a problem, I have to sit down and say, ah, I was telling sister, dude, it shall be well. So I have to tell myself it shall be well. I'm here telling you pray when you are in a problem. So if I encounter a problem, I will sit down like this. I will remember, oh, I have been telling Sister Adut to pray. So I must pray because I'm the one telling people to pray. You get my point. So, sit belt. 
God used the word seat belt in your revelation, but it means the all arm of God. This people, including us, because when a revelation is to be mentioned here, it means us too. My sister, let us speak the truth to one another. Not only them, it means to everyone under the influence of my voice. Don't say I'm going to church, yet you are going to party. <laughs> yeah, that's what it means. So, I repeat again your question. God, you can see, using a man, you see a man prophesying, doing miracles, but that one doesn't mean that man is called. You hear where we have read, he said, Many will say, I cast out demon. Even if you see man casting out demon, it doesn't really mean that that man is called. God may be using him to cast demon for that time, but God don't know him or her. God can only be pleased with you and I when we obey what he has told us. God will be so more pleased with me, Brian. If I'm telling you don't steal, and I'm not stealing, he will say, this is my son. But if I'm telling you don't steal I'm, I'm, and I'm a thief, he say, look at this one. I don't know if you're okay, Sister Dut, before we hear from Sister Tina. Yeah, I'm all right, Papa. Even I saw, I saw a movie in Facebook. It was man of God. He had his Bible. He wanted to go and deliver another person. So he saw the person and the person has a demon. And then he, he kept telling him, I can't, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out. And then the demon is spoken to the man and said, who are you, Kevin? And then <laughs> I was laughing. And then he said, I, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. And then the demon replies to the man and said, Jesus Christ, when he used to cast me out, he doesn't, he doesn't do sin and come and cast me. And then he, he told the guy that yesterday wasn't you with, the, uh, with that woman of God. And then today you come to cast me out. So the man just dropped his Bible down and he kneeled down and prayed. He knows that the devil has, <laughs> has spoken the truth. And then I said, that's true. What the devil said is really true because Jesus Christ never make a sin. That's why he used to cast. But you cannot go and sin tomorrow, today and tomorrow you're coming to cast out. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Papa. But my yeah. question is just like, because I have explained the dream in the group, and there was man of God who was telling me that you need to pray for those people. So that's that's why I will repeat my question again. What what will I do to them? Would I just pray or would I spoke to them in how like which way? That's what I would like to know, Papa. If you have not told them the dream, you know the Bible, the message of God, you don't paint. Sit with them, you tell them this is what I saw in the my revelation then God will speak to each one of them. Then you suggest to them to pray together, like God to expose everyone's weakness, or you tell them, let everybody pray against his weakness or our weakness, and no one will be offended. When God shows you something, you don't paint it. You just come to people, you talk to them, because that is a good message to them. Those who are wise, they will see, oh, there is something they need to play. But I know somebody will say, ah, how come she's the only one who has the seat to bed? So some people who are a bit anointed may see you as a problem. I hope it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> That's true, Papa. That's why I'm scared to spoke because the woman of God that has the ministry, she see like no one got called. She's the one that called. Even she doesn't believe in any man of God. Yeah, like, you know you are in Nevia. You see, Jonah, God gave Jonah a message. So you yeah. pass the message. Yeah, God will touch the heart. By the way, that message, when it goes to them, yeah. they will, they, I tell you, they will, be, they, will, they will be cold, they will be calmness, they will be calm. Yeah, it will not break them. It will make them realize that, yeah. Just like the way all of us here, God is speaking to us that we recheck ourselves. Praise God. Thank okay. you, Baba. I hope you're okay now. I'm okay, Baba. Thank you. Ah, God bless you. Just by sympathy.
and they will understand you. Sister Tina, please, we saw your hand earlier on. Yes, I, I just wanted to say that in the Good News translation, it specifically says the belt of truth, but it doesn't say so in the uh, New King James Version, just for clarification. And also another response I wanted to uh, give uh, to Stadut's question, like, you see John 4, 24, there about the Bible says, just when Jesus was with the Samaritan woman by the well, he told him that like God is spirit, a time is coming and now is the time when those who worship God uh, would worship God in truth and in spirit because God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. So for you can you may see a Christian or even a very powerful man or woman of God performing miracles, winning souls to Christ. But if there is any aspect of his or her life that doesn't portray the truth of the word of God, it, um, it undermines the power or the potency in the word of God in her life. And that person can easily be amongst those that uh, Matthew uh, chapter seven from verse 21 uh, speaks of because God is spirit and in truth. So once you feel you have gotten this gift of the Holy Spirit with the, the working of miracles and stuff like that, you begin to do your own thing and see things in your own perspective because the world perspective of truth is completely different from biblical or God's perspective of truth. So if you begin to just... Uh, 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 do things your own and feel that morally it is okay. Whereas before God, uh, it is not the truth of God or the true reflection of the word of God or the image of God in you. Then you may be working the miracles. You have the gift all right, but the truth or the and the power of it there of is not with you. Just as even John 17, 7, 17 said, when Jesus prayed for the disciples, said, sanctify them with, uh, with the truth. Your word is the truth. So anything that any child of God does without the truth, not the worldly truth, but the biblical truth or godly truth, um, I think it sort of disqualifies one from you know, being a partaker of the heritage of God. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you and God bless you. Amen, amen. God bless you too. Yeah, I'll say this, the new version and the old version, it's just a matter of what they use, but they mean the same thing. Because if you continue to different translation, you find out, you still mention the word truth. I do believe that God used the word belt just to make it easier for us to understand. Just like he would have said, okay, this is the cloth of army. So he went by mentioning particular parts of how man can be dressing up and he used it to make it easier for us to understand. That's why you see they use the word belt. Then the truth, which means as a man or woman to be safe, it needs to be having the truth in him because the spirit that God has caused to dwell in us is the spirit of the, the spirit of truth. When you hear you talk about the uh, shoes, which is the peace, it means as a child of God, we have to be peacemakers. So he went by mentioning parts of any man, a soldier, how he can dress, because we know they have a, an element. So he mentioned that which is salvation. He went like, you know, they have to have like a bulletproof on their chest, which is a breastplate, which he mentioned righteousness. So it means the righteousness which he talk about is not self-righteousness, but this righteousness of God, which we know is the belief, our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. So whereby you see, he mentioned a sword, he used the word sword to make it understand that we are soldiers. 
So a really soldier, before you go to battle, you have to be well armed. I can't say I'm going to the battle, but I don't have element. I don't have bullet, bullet breastplate, something bulletproof. I have not tied my cloth with a belt. I have no shoes for the battle. I don't have a shield. So that's why God went by describing them that way. So it's the same Holy Spirit inspired people in writing, but they use, because I understand the inspiration of the Bible was the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God. But the words use a language of men. So that is what makes it a bit different, but it still means the same thing. In that area, I don't know if I'm okay, my sister. Yeah, Baba, thank you. Yeah. It's just like example. I may say, I may say all of you mention my name Ibrahim. You'll find that every one of you will mention it, you'll pronounce it differently. So it's the same way Bible can be, people can pronounce it differently but we still mean the same. I don't know if I said that one is okay. I have seen when I'm yeah. in this country, when people are mentioning my name, they mention differently, but they all mean the same. <laughs> I see, sister, I don't know you want to say something to Natina before. <laughs> yeah. So as Christian to be safe, please let us clothe ourselves in safety. Before, for safety reason. Yeah. Amen. I believe we are okay then. Okay. Uh, we love to pray. We love to pray for someone. I remember Sister Dutch mentioned uh, there is a sister having an issue in a marriage. We pray God to touch their heart because sometimes something very small it can end up being big as a result of bringing the things of the past. Yeah. If you see a man beating a wife, he doesn't just wake up and beat. It means there are some disagreement that went on. And many times when people are reporting, they only report themselves as good people. But yeah, it's okay, sister. So I'll pray for us. Yeah, Stretch before, your hand, I pray. I forgot something. When I was talking to her, because yesterday you were praying for a spirit of divorce. And then when you were praying that, I was saying that, like, who wanted to divorce? So. And then the spirit of the Lord told me her husband wanted to divorce. So when I talked to her today and I asked her, she confirmed it. She said, he's, we have a plan to go and marry a second wife in, in, um, in Africa. So that we need to pray for that to cancel it. And when I was talking to her, the spirit of God gave me the scriptures to give her to pray for, which is Jeremiah 110. And then... Um, and then uh, Psalm 2022, 20, so I give it to her and then I told her that the Lord saying that you need to pray for that. And then the other thing that the Spirit of God told me was to tell her that to pray over uh, the water or food to give it to him. And then God will, 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 will walk in that one to change his heart. And then the other thing is, was to command the man because she's a woman of God. And then the Lord told me she had power so she can pray and command the man not to do whatever like because he um he's cheating on on her and things like that and then the spirit of the lord told me to come in so he's the man has a plan to go and marry a second wife that's the problem so we need to pray over that and cancel it thank you baba sorry okay. men i'll say men women if i say men you say women okay now wow it is well we pray indeed for her God to preserve, even if she's a woman of God. That is the work of satellite to torment people of God. Holy Ghost, 
do it again, do it again in our life. Open our eyes to see Jesus. Seated up on the throne. Holy Ghost, do it again in our life. Open our eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. Open our eyes to see Jesus seated upon the throne. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the grace and love. Thank you for the truth you have revealed to us. Thank you for not hiding it from your servant, Abraham. Thank you for the insight that you gave him. Thank you for making him so sensitive, very humble, very loving, generous. Father, we say thank you. In the name of Jesus, we come before you asking for mercy and forgiveness. Many a times, we have taken people around us for granted. Have mercy. We have lost many chances as a result of that. All I ask is for your mercy in the name of Jesus. Father, I commit our sister wherever it is. I cry for your mercy if there is anything she may have done. Say, knowing and knowing, contrary to your will, forgive her in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, have mercy on us as individuals, for you have made us understand not everyone calls you Lord that will enter the kingdom, but only those who do what you ask them to do. It's our prayer that, O oh God, help us to be all obedient in Jesus' name. As we put all in God's armor this very hour, now and forever in Jesus' name. As I stretch my hand towards our sister, wherever she is, that spirit that destabilizes our marriage, that pain, bitterness in the heart, wherever and whatever demon have come to frustrate our life, you and the clean spirit, in the name of Jesus. I command you this very hour, the cause of thoughts of divorce, out you demon, you that have entered a husband, out you demon, I command you and clean spirit, out in the name of Jesus. Whether I like it or not, you will not have the second wife in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. If I be a man of God, this man will not have the second wife. He will stay with his wife no matter what. That spirit, in the name of Jesus, I command you out of this sister. As I stretch my hand, I speak order in this marriage. I speak calmness. I speak calmness. I command that heart be open now. I command that heart break loose that bondage in the heart. Break loose. I command that heart be loose. I release this heart of a man. I release this heart of the woman. Let there be reconciliation. Blessed are the peacemaker. I command peace between them. Let there be peace now. This marriage, as the Lord has brought them together, let there be no man to put them aside. I, buy, I bound them together as husband and wife until Jesus returns. In the name of Jesus, I command peace, thoughts of divorce, fire in the name of Jesus. Plans of divorce be canceled. I speak to this home, no more fight, 
I speak order. Whatever in your server, the woman she gives to the husband. I command every poison in the system of the man be flushed out. Witchcraft done against this marriage, calling him back home as a result of family members. I release the Father Holy Ghost to consume that witchcraft. Every bewitchment that makes this man to see his husband, wife as useless, catch fire in the name of Jesus. I separate them from any engagement that is not of God. I separate them from any engagement that is not of God. I command them to stay as husband and wife, happily married. I command affection to be restored. Affection to be restored. I release this couple, every spirit that is not of God in the life of this couple. Out you demon. Out you demon. Out you Satan. With all your manipulation. I command you out. Out you demon. Out of them. I command you out. I declare them free. For whose son I've set free is free indeed. In Jesus' name. I pray for the gathering. As the revelation comes, speak to every Christian. Whatever it is in the name of Jesus. They may it have done as individual. Oh Lord, expose weakness and deliver each one of them. I pray in the name of Jesus. Whatever stop them to see their bed. Whatever to stop them to see their seat bed. Be broken. I command their eyes to be open. I command unity upon them. I command door open. Their leader, God elevation, fresh anointing, anything in that gathering that is not of God, be dismounted in the name of Jesus. Forces that have raised against that gathering, be scattered by fire. For Jesus says, when two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. I speak Jesus to lead them wherever it is in the name of Jesus. That woman will no longer be the driver, but Jesus is the driver. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect them, O God, as you use them, O God, in the greater way, O God, to deliver, to heal, continue to enlarge them, continue to strengthen them, help them, O God, to overcome every obstacle. Negative declaration made against them, be canceled, that which pulled them down, be destroyed. I stretch my hand upon that gathering. I break the powers of enemy. I declare them free. I declare them free. They will serve God with power. They will increase in power. They will walk in power. They will see in the spirit. They will perceive in the spirit. They will declare things that will come to pass. They will grow in number. They will grow in grace. And the anointing that breaks are in New York fall upon them. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. I pray for their blessing. Oh Lord my God, as they call unto you when they gather, may you answer God. May you reveal yourself than ever before. Any kind of disunity, misunderstanding, be destroyed. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit to your people at this very hour before you. I pray for your grace and love. Reveal yourself more than ever before. Wherever they are, oh God, as an individual, I speak a blessing. Those who are going to work, I bless the work of their hand. Those who are having children, I bless their children. I speak prosperity. I speak increase. Any spirit that is not of God, troubling any of you, I command that spirit out. Whatever spirit that causes weakness and trouble, be destroyed and scattered. Negative declaration made against you. Be counsel in the name of Jesus. Every plan of enemy concerning you, be counsel in the name of Jesus. You that we have caught issue, find a solution in the name of Jesus. You feel discouraged. I speak encouragement in the name of Jesus. As God visited Abraham, may God visit you this very day. As he was able to reveal his plan to Abraham, may God reveal his plan concerning you in the name of Jesus. Every curse laid upon you as an individual, be broken in the name of Jesus. Every manipulation of enemy concerning you as an individual, be destroyed and scattered. Oh Lord, arise in your Shekinah glory and let the voice of enemy be silent. Arise in their home, oh God. Arise in their family. Those who are experiencing trouble in their marriage, I command that trouble to see. Those who are experiencing confusion in their marriage, I command it to see. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare freedom in your home. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Where there is darkness, let there be light. 
the light of God to shine in Jesus Christ's mighty name. We pray and believe. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Let us hear salvation. His word abide in us and we abide in it. Remember, better is not good enough. The best is here to come. In Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all days of our life, and we shall be in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Shalom. We love you. We meet again by God willing tomorrow. Praise God.